Metallothionine is a super important protein in the body that you need to have enough of to eliminate toxic metals and to lower oxidative stress. Despite its importance, many people have no idea what metallothionine is or how it impacts their health. In this video, we will explore the biochemical nature of metallothionine, its critical functions, and its links to certain health conditions like Alzheimer's and autism. I will also talk about how to test for metallothionine and ways to increase it through diet and supplements. To start off, what even is metallothionine? It is a protein, or rather a family of similar proteins in your body that help manage metal levels and detoxify harmful substances, especially toxic metals like mercury, cadmium, and lead. It is packed with cysteine, an amino acid that helps it bind to metals. It's part of a group of proteins found in many of your body's tissues, especially in organs like the liver and kidneys. Basically what it does is that it grabs onto metals like zinc and copper to transport them around, or it can also grab onto toxic metals to guide them out of the body. It can bind to several metal ions at once, with zinc being the major one. This ability to transport and release metals helps your body regulate their levels and make sure you don't overload on toxic metals. Your body controls the production of metallothionine through specific genes that get activated when you're exposed to metals or when they create oxidative stress. Zinc supplementation can also trigger metallothionine production, but more on that later in the video. Okay, so why is metallothionine so important for your health? Again, its main role is to keep metals in your body in check. It helps maintain a healthy copper-zinc ratio, which I go over in a different video. Copper and zinc imbalances have been reported in all kinds of health problems, from depression, weak immunity, and dementia. It basically acts as a buffer, holding on to metals when they're too high and releasing them when they're too low in your body. This ability is also used when it guides harmful metals out of your body. Metallothionine has a very high affinity to mercury, so it is most potent when you are exposed to mercury, but it can also bind to other heavy metals like cadmium or lead. It first chelates them like a claw and then transports them out of your body either directly inside the GI tract or when they're already in your bloodstream, then it will guide them out through your liver and kidneys. And lastly, it is also a potent antioxidant, so it helps protect your cells from oxidative stress by neutralizing harmful free radicals. In a world where we are constantly bombarded with environmental insults, keeping oxidative stress within a healthy balance is crucial for keeping your cells and tissue safe from damage and from chronic inflammation. Great, now that you have a good overview of how metallothionine works, let's talk about its role in Alzheimer's, autism, and other illnesses. These are all areas of ongoing research, but there is data that indicates that metallothionine can help protect against Alzheimer's by regulating metal levels in the brain. As you might know from my video on iron and copper accumulation in the brains of people with Alzheimer's, these metals can contribute to the formation of amyloid plaques. Amyloid plaques are clusters of abnormal proteins that form in the spaces between nerve cells in the brain. The idea is that boosting metallothionine could help reduce these plaques and also slow the disease by helping the body better regulate excess copper and iron. Some research also suggests that problems with metallothionine function could be linked to autism. Certain studies have shown that children with autism often have high oxidative stress and abnormal metallothionine levels, either way too low or too high. This could be an indication that something with their metal regulation is off since the children on average also had abnormal levels of toxic metals in their blood. Improving metallothionine function could be a potential way of improving this condition. Now, beyond Alzheimer's and autism, low metallothionine or abnormal functioning has also been indirectly tied to other health conditions like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Since it helps keep oxidative stress in check, problems with metallothionine function could make all of these conditions worse because your body's already more susceptible to cell damage and chronic inflammation. Of course, more research is definitely needed, but understanding how to improve metallothionine levels 
could open up new treatment options. And the more data we get on it, the more we realize just how important this protein really is. Okay, let's now talk about how to test for it correctly. This is where I have bad news for you. Testing for metallothionine is still largely in the experimental phase and it is not widely available in most clinical laboratories. While research laboratories have different ways to measure it, these tests are usually not offered by your everyday lab. So if you went to your doctor and told them to check your metallothionine levels, he or she would not know what to do with you or where to send you. The good news is that there are simple, fairly side effect free ways to increase metallothionine easily, which we will talk about in a second. So even if it is very difficult to evaluate your levels outside of research facilities, there are ways to boost low levels and improve functioning. This is done through foods and supplements that are known to increase metallothionine synthesis. The two most important nutrients for this are zinc and cysteine. Cysteine is the key building block of the metallothionine protein itself, and it provides the sulfur groups needed to bind to metals. Zinc, on the other hand, directly stimulates metallothionine production and ensures its optimal functioning. So without enough cysteine, your body can't make sufficient metallothionine, and without zinc, the protein itself cannot function properly. To increase these nutrients in your diet, Eat foods like chicken, meat or dairy for cysteine and red meat or pumpkin seeds for zinc. In terms of supplements, you have zinc supplements, obviously, and you can take whey protein or N-acetylcysteine NAC for cysteine. Selenium is another important mineral that supports metallothionine indirectly. Its antioxidative properties help bind to toxic metals and eliminate them. So it takes away some of the work that metallothionine would have to do. By increasing your selenium levels, you protect your cells from damage and free up metallothionine to do other tasks. Much of the American and European soil is very low in selenium, besides the American Midwest. That means many people are borderline deficient. Brazil nuts are one of the few good sources of selenium, and otherwise you will probably need to supplement, ideally in the form of selenium yeast or selenomethionine. There are also a few studies that show that curcumin, which is found in turmeric, can help increase metallothionine. I would assume the process to be similar to that of selenium, so by indirectly taking the workload off metallothionine and freeing it up for other tasks. Including turmeric in your meals is generally a good idea, since curcumin also has other health benefits unrelated to metallothionine. And lastly, anything that reduces overall oxidative stress will also help you. Nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin E are powerful antioxidants that neutralize free radicals and thereby decrease the demand for metallothionine's protective actions. Glutathione, another very potent antioxidant, also binds to heavy metals and supports the elimination. By including these nutrients in your diet or the precursors for them, you can support metallothionine's effectiveness and maintain better overall health. For vitamin C, citrus fruits and peppers would be a good option. For vitamin E, I like to use wheat germ oil or red palm oil. And in terms of glutathione, you generally want to go with the same foods necessary for cysteine production, because cysteine is the rate-limiting amino acid necessary for glutathione production. All of these nutrients can also be supplemented, but that's a topic for a different video.